It's a Thursday, January 27th, and the fine for your body is sitting on the news of the Consumers are being told not to expect any ease in prices, at least in the foreseeable future, as importers continue to battle with global supply chain disruptions. The caution came as Central Bank Governor Cleveston Haynes reported that while it was possible for the government to provide an ease in some taxes, it would have to weigh it carefully against possible impact and also search for other revenue streams. He made the comments on Wednesday as he delivered his Barbados economic review for 2021. From our perspective right now, what we see is that prices will remain elevated. You know, various, as, as always, uh, some prices will go up and some will come down, but I think on average prices will remain uh, elevated. Uh, we indicated that the, the moving average ratio was about 3.2%, I think, at the end, towards the end of 2021. And based on what we have seen, with how prices moved in the last half of 2021, there's likely to see that, that moving average inflation rate going up and possibly even the point-to-point the, the -point rate going up in, in the short term. The Democratic Labour Party has rejected an offer from Prime Minister Mia Motley for it to nominate persons to fill the two vacant opposition seats in the Senate, saying it is not hers to give. Having won all 30 seats in the January 19th general election, the Prime Minister, in announcing her new cabinet and the Senate picks, said she would consult with opposition parties that contested the poll on the appointment of two opposition senators. But acting DLP President Steve Blackett contended that the offer was not made within what he described as the four corners of the law, and as such, his party will not be complicit in any such arrangement. The party constitution that spoke to that was Section 75, which clearly states in the absence of a leader of the opposition that the Governor General or the President now names nine candidates instead of seven. Um, so the, the, the gift that Morley is offering is, is a gift that she uh, cannot offer. It is not an offer to us that is hers to give. Um, so you see, what does this start wrong? Blackett, however, said that the party is willing to take up the offer once it is done properly. When it properly comes to us, the organs of the party will sit at Jersey Street and decide if we first, if we will accept the offer, and once we accept the offer, we will identify the two people to occupy those two seats in the Senate. Like the DLB, the Alliance Party for Progress was also unsuccessful in the recent poll, and its leader, Bishop Joseph Arthurley, said his party would only accept the Prime Minister's offer if the process was constitutional. I believe my party is interested in preserving democracy in Barbados and developing democracy in Barbados. And if there is something which is proposed that includes us that is legal, it is constitutional, it is moral, I am sure that the Alliance Party would seriously consider that. The sharp rise in COVID-19 cases in other country has come as no surprise to the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners. That's according to its public relations officer, Dr. Russell Broom Webster, who said that the increase in cases had been predicted by health officials. On Tuesday, Barbados recorded 923 new cases of the virus, the highest ever number of positive cases in a single day, while the second highest number, 723, was reported on Wednesday. We certainly were aware that due to the transmission dynamics in the island that something had changed um, towards the end of last year. And that change was in keeping with the with a new variant being present in the island. And as has been noted in the rest of the world, Omicron is extremely um, transmissible. And some places would quote it to be as transmissible as a virus such like measles, which is the most transmissible uh, respiratory virus that we are aware of. Now, once Omicron arrived, we anticipated that it would be very high, high numbers of cases. Um, I would say fortunately and unfortunately, we do still have a large portion of people who are vaccinated. Um, we say we're approaching 70% or so. Um, and that's still a good thing, but because of the transmissibility of the virus and you know, we, we still worry that you can't have large old breaks. There's regional and international news after this short break. 
Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional News Now, the director of the Pan American Health Organization has warned that millions of children are missing out on routine vaccinations, putting countries at risk of losing two decades of immunization progress as the COVID-19 outbreak reaches its third year in the Americas. Dr. Caricia Etienne issued the warning during PAHO's weekly COVID-19 press conference held on Wednesday. It isn't the only risk that our children face. Over the last two years, millions of kids across the Americas have missed out on their routine medical visits, leaving them behind on their routine vaccinations. In fact, vaccination coverage has dipped so low that countries are at risk of losing two decades of immunization progress. As a result, countries are beginning to see outbreaks of diseases that for years had been under control. Brazil, for instance, is fighting an ongoing measles outbreak, while Haiti and the Dominican Republic are combating ongoing diphtheria transmission that is threatening children's growth and development. And finally, Afghanistan is hanging by a thread. That's according to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who told the Security Council that six months after the takeover by the Taliban, over half of the Afghan population was facing extreme levels of hunger as they dealt with harsh winter and drought. He said added to that, the country was also fighting the COVID-19 pandemic and other diseases. Six months after the takeover by the Taliban, Afghanistan is hanging by a thread. For Afghans, daily life has become a frozen hell. We need to suspend the rules and conditions that constrict not only Afghanistan's economy, but our life-saving operations. At this moment of maximum need, these rules must be seriously reviewed. International funding must be allowed to pay the salaries of public sector workers. From surgeons and nurses to teachers, sanitation workers and electricians, all are vital to keeping systems up and running, and they are critical to Afghanistan's future. We need to give them a reason to stay in the country. Time is of the essence. Without action, lives will be lost and despair and extremism will grow. A collapse of the Afghan economy could lead to a massive exodus of people fleeing the country. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.